This video is to show how students log into the secure browser for the CASP SBAC testing on a Chromebook. For students to log in on a Windows computer, there is a separate video. Students should not sign in to the Chromebook as they usually do. Do not have the students sign in to the Chromebook. Instead, they should go to the Apps button at the lower left of the screen. When they click on the Apps button, they will see AIR Secure Browser. They should select that and the Secure Browser will open. Teachers, it's probably a good idea to have the students keep the Chromebooks on their desks and closed until you give them the instructions. Students are used to signing into the Chromebooks as usual. They won't be able to use the secure browser if they do. Once the secure browser starts, the student will have to select their state, have them select California from the drop-down menu. The next box will say choose your assessment program. There should only be one California assessment system available. The students click OK. On the sign-in page, there are three pieces of information that students will need to enter. The first is their state SSID number. This is not their district permanent ID number. It is not their social security number. It is an identification number from the state. The administrator in charge of testing at each site will have printed out for each student the state SSID number that the student will need to enter. They'll also have the student's legal first name. It's not a nickname, it's not, a, uh, it's not their middle name, it's their legal first name that they will need. The third thing that they will need to enter is the session ID. This is the number, the, the string, that comes up when teachers start the testing session on that day. For more information about that, see the teacher login video. Once the students log in, they will be given a confirmation page asking them, is this you? They should check their name and ID and school, and if all those are correct, they click, yes, it's me. Then they're taken to this page, which says, which lists all the tests that are available for them to take. There should only be one. If you as the teacher have only chosen the one test that the students are taking that day, they should only have one choice and they just click on it. At that point, they get a message that says waiting for TA approval. All the student has to do at this point is nothing. They don't want to click to cancel, they don't want to click anywhere else, they don't want to click in some other tab or some other window or close the browser, they don't want to do that. They want to just wait for the teacher to approve them and start the test. After the teacher approves each student, the student will see a screen that looks something like this that says, is this your test? And they can scroll down and they can see all of the different types of uh, accommodations and different types of tools that they have that, is, uh, that are available to them. If it's the correct test and everything looks right, then the student clicks on yes, start my test. The next page that will come up for most tests, especially the ELA test, is the sound check. So the student has to click on the sound icon to see if they can hear the sound. If they do hear the sound, then they click yes. If they click, if no, if they don't hear the sound, then they will probably have to get out of the secure browser, um, adjust the sound on the device and then get back into the secure browser, enter all of their login information again and start from the beginning. Once they click yes, they see test instructions and help. 
It tells them how to use the tools that are available, how to operate the calculator and dictionaries and all the different tools that they have available in this test. When we did the pilot testing last year, the field testing last year, most students just skipped right past this and figured out how to use the system on their own. When they've done that, they click Begin Test Now. And the test starts, and they're ready to go.